Okay, welcome back to the channel, everyone. We have one of the most requested videos of all time on our channel. We're finally doing it. It is the crew accommodation tour, and we have left no detail hidden. We've gone through the entire boat on this one. So I'm gonna walk inside now and take you downstairs to the crew mess where the purser, Maxine, is waiting. And we're gonna start at the bottom of the boat and work our way all the way to the top, right up to the bridge, show the captain's cabin, the, everything. So without further ado, here we go. Hey everyone, welcome to our version of MTV Cribs. As you can see, <laughs> we've got the crew mess here. And it's actually a perfect time because we've just set up for lunch. So I'm going to give you guys a quick tour of the crew mess before the scavengers come down. As you can see, we've already got one over there. Davey. Hey team, how are you guys doing? <laughs> Always the first one down for his meal. Um, so how we get the food down every day is we've got a dumb waiter. The chef's upstairs. They put all the food into the dumb waiter. Normally they radio us, like one of us girls, normally crew mess girl. And then they just send the lift down and we get all the food have the meal, the lunch, whatever it is, and then we put the platters back in the dumb waiter and send it back up to the chefs. Over here, we've got the uniform cupboard. And then, as you can see, we've got the fridges here. We have always got them fully stocked with some sodas and snacks. And then we keep all the leftover food, which we're only allowed to keep normally for one day, and then uh, we discard of it. Over here, up in the cupboard, we've got all our snacks. We've got the cereals, chips, chocolates, any kind of dry store that we can store, we store up here. Underneath all the seating area as well, we've got chips, chocolates, snacks. As you can see, the most important thing down here in the crew mess is the coffee machine. This thing gets used about a thousand times a day. Uh, crew are very not functional when they don't have their coffee in the system. And um, over here, we've got the snack cupboard. We stock it every Monday and every Friday. It lasts about all of an hour before it's finished. As you can see, it's pretty bare, but crew can't help themselves. Over here, we've got all the cameras. It's all the natural light that you can see in this crew mess. And um, it's just to keep track of, you know, guest movements and yeah. Over here, we've got, over here, we've got the engineering alarm panel. And um, if there's ever, you know, an alarm system down in the engine room that goes off, whether it's uh, overflowing of water or alarms for fire, it all comes down to the crew mess. So if someone's here, they get notified. Normally, we just have to radio an engineer. And um, yeah. So that's about it for the crew mess. I'm gonna take you guys on to the laundry. Uh, I think we actually have Paige in there at the moment. Hope you're enjoying your meal, Davey. Loving it. Okay guys, so here we have the laundry. I'm gonna introduce you to Paigey, our laundry stew, and she's gonna tell you a little bit about what goes on here. Hello. So this is my laundry room. This is where I spend most of my day. Um, unlike the chefs, it's a 24 hour job. <laughs> <laughs> the top four machines are dryers the bottom for our washers and then our two big industrial machines get to dry and wash as well. We also had a sheet day, so don't worry about these. Um, my day will start with taking in crew laundry. Everyone has a number on their bag. We'll tag with the names. Um, and then as soon as we do turn up, we'll get into guest laundry and try to get it back. Same day. Yeah. We just had a week where we had 10 guests. so taking in all their laundry in a day, putting crew laundry on hold, trying to get that back up in rooms before turn downs and the day's done. And then also our crew will do two uniform changes a day. So you can imagine we get crew laundry every morning waiting at the door and we've got to get that back before the start of the next day. So yeah, that's my day in laundry. Okay guys, well thanks Paigey. Yeah. I'm gonna take you for a little bit of a last minute tour to the crew lounge. Okay, so here we have the crew lounge. Earlier I showed you guys the crew mess and we just came out of the laundry. Uh, this is a really nice area, crew come to just chill. We've got the TV over here to watch movies. Uh, it's also a really good storage spot. In all these cupboards over here, we've got all our stationery stored. 
underneath all the seating area we've got more storage and then under these poofs we've got a bunch of games for games nights when the crew want to play or just be social and a really great thing as well is we've got a crew head over here uh, especially when we're on charter and everyone's working in different shifts if your roommate's still sleeping and they've had a late night it's really nice because we can kind of come use this toilet as opposed to you know going into the cabin and waking our crew member up um, but yep that's pretty much the crew lounge and crew mess and Blair's going to take you upstairs and show you some of the crew cabins. Okay cool this is the first cabin that we have to show you guys this is the chief engineer's cabin he lives in here by himself which is pretty cool um, but yeah let's take you for a walk inside. So as you can see he's got all of his files up here um, a little panel over here that all the alarms come through so during the eve like during the night if he's sleeping and they get say a main engine alarm or something that's gone wrong in the engine room which actually happens quite often uh, we just get all kinds of alarms for different things that happen which aren't necessarily a bad thing but um, just the alarms come through often and the engineers will get it sent straight to them and he has a whole little panel here that shows you what alarm's going off and he can silence it and then needs to go down to the engine room and go check what's going on. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna go through too much of his cabin because <laughs> it is personal space, but this is his bathroom. Also a really nice little bathroom. And uh, yeah, he is lucky enough to be one of the, the few crew members on board that actually share a cabin with nobody. Um, it's the chief engineer the chief officer and the captain that have cabins to themselves and the rest of the crew all have bunk mates. But um, yeah, we're going to head to my cabin next and show you what's there. Yeah, this is where all the magic happens. This is where this video is going to be made. <laughs> uh, this is my desk where I do all of my editing. Off charter, I work in here and do most of the videos, all the Instagram reels, everything happens down here. On charter, I have a desk up in the bridge where I work. Uh, it's just easier that way because I'm kind of more involved with all the bridge operations and I can see what's going on. And there's cameras up there where I can see all the guest movements so I can bounce between filming YouTube videos and filming stuff for the guests. Um, it's just a lot easier that way to stay kind of in touch with everyone. I share this cabin with the bosun, uh, Maddie. So we're kind of on the same shift, so it works pretty well with like times of people waking up and me going to bed. Even though I work quite late most nights, I come in here as quietly as possible, try not to wake him up. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with this cabin. I've had a lot of terrible cabins on board super yachts. They can get very small. And um, yeah, this is a really decent cabin. It's one of the best on, on this level, so I'm super happy with it. And uh, yeah, I have an awesome desk, so <laughs> I'm stoked. And uh, yeah, this is my bathroom. It's, uh, it always looks this clean. It's always like this. Always. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will take you to one of the forward cabins now. Uh, they're a bit smaller, and this is where Moo and Lauren, the stewardesses, live. So yeah, pretty much the same, a uh, little bit smaller because we're up forward towards the bow so you can actually see it kind of tapers in a bit. But pretty much the same setup, all the same cupboards and drawers, same amount of storage, two portholes, which is cool. It's always nice to get natural light in and um, kind of the same bathroom setup. And yeah, that's about it for crew cabins on this level. Uh, as you can see up here, there's actually an escape hatch that goes right up to the um, to the tender garage, which then goes up to the forepeak. So if ever in a, an emergency, there's an escape hatch right here, which is always nice to have. I think it's actually a legal requirement to have where um, all the crew cabins are. To touch on uh, tidiness again with the cabins, obviously we've neatened these up, but we have um, a cabin inspection that is actual, an actual legal requirement by our flag, um, which is Cayman Islands. And um, yeah, once a month, it is the kind of management, the captains and management of the vessel's responsibility to make sure that they do an inspection. So normally the chief stewardess and the chief officer will have a walk around every month and make sure that all the cabins are in good working order, everything is neat and tidy. Um, <laughs> you'll see that, that some stewardesses on board some boats will actually go and do a dust test and they will go and wipe their fingers along all the 
the top of the doors and the railings and just go make sure there's no dust around, make sure that you pass your cabin inspection. But yeah, it's just one of those things that is required and has to be done. So it's actually it's beneficial for the crew because the, one of the main reasons it happens is obviously cleanliness, but also to make sure that you're keeping your cabin in good order for the next person coming in because crew are constantly changing. People leave and join boats often. So it's, it's a good thing. But uh, now we're going to head up to the upper pantry and go see what's happening up there. Oh, hello. Come for a brew. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm second stew on Loon and this is the pantry. I would say this is where the magic happens. So we do have all guest items, such as coffee, mugs, and coffee machine over here. We do have an ice machine, but it's currently on holiday, getting serviced by the engineers. Uh, we do have a dumb waiter, which the chefs could use, but us Jews do prefer to use our legs. And we also have a dishwasher for any glassware, but we also like to wash those too. Um, if you would like, we do also have a phone here. So if any of the girls can't get in touch with each other on the radio, we'll just say, can you please pop to a room? and we can have a proper chat about what's going on. Um, so yeah, the food, we do run from the galley all the way through here, straight into the service areas. And from there, we will go from, um, from here to the bridge, as, where I'll show you the bridge pantry. Okay, so this is the bridge pantry. We would call this the cocktail making pantry, where we have all the items for cocktails. We do obviously have our lovely coffee machine, which keeps us alive day by day and everything else that we need for the guests, really. Okay, so that's a wrap for the pantries, and I will pass you over to Paul, who will show you around Bridge Deck. Okay, guys, welcome to the Bridge Deck foyer. To my right here, we have the bridge, and then to my left, we have my cabin, the captain's cabin, and over here, we have the chief officer's cabin. So let's go have a look. Over here in the uh, chief officer's cabin, nice big spacious room, big bed. One of the real special features on Loon that, we're not, that not a lot of other yachts have is that the chief officer has his own cabin up here on bridge deck. So he's nice and close to the bridge if there's any emergencies. Also, it means I get woken up less than the middle of the night as you know, they normally get their door knocked on first. Also here, he's got a nice big bathroom, you know, all to himself. So, uh, you know, a nice feature, keeps the COs happy. Okay, that's about it for his cabin. Now let's move on to mine. So we come across the hallway here. Works out well, we can see each other from each of our desks so that uh, you know we get to have a talk in the middle of the day when we're both working, doors are open. We get to discuss options of what we're doing, where we're cruising. Uh, down here, down the hallway, we've got the jacuzzi. So the, uh, the guests are on the, on the jacuzzi deck aft there. But come on into my cabin. Got my desk here, nice big computer screen so I can put all my Excel spreadsheets up, keep on top of all my emails. Got the camera system, got the uh, anchor alarm so I can see if the vessel's dragging or if we're staying in place. And then through here where the magic happens, got the nice big bed. So uh, no, it's really great, really great room. Up nice and high, three big windows. Uh, you know, very, very happy with this cabin. Best cabin on board. Best cabin on board, you know. <laughs> It's good to be king. <laughs> so here you go, Blair. <laughs> One day, mate. One day. <laughs> when you get off a tank deck. <laughs> so that's about it for in here. Now let's go check out the bridge. Cool, so come on in to the bridge. In here, we've got our chart table where we discuss our plans and where we're gonna to move to, where the second officer comes in, does the navigation. As right now, you can see we've got our transas and our time zero systems, both on our anchor watch. So you see we've got the circles around where we've dropped the anchor. That's our swing radius. If we were to do a full 360, if the boat was to drag outside of that ring, an alarm would go off and it would wake somebody up or you know notify us in case I'm in my cabin or something that the vessel is, uh, is dragging anchor. Uh, besides up, up top here, we've got our GMBSSs, our AIS, our SAT-C, one of our echo sounders and uh, our nav techs. So really put important little workstation and what it does is it allows the officers to continue working while the, per the OOW on watch is not being disturbed. So if we come around here, we've got a really nice uh, seating table. Uh, it's where the HOD is on board. We have our morning meetings while we have our coffee, talk about the plans for the day, but also, you know, the guests can come up while we're underway and cruising and hang out and discuss plans with me, check out where we're going and just enjoy the ride. 
And then coming round, we come into the conning station. So uh, we step up into the bridge. Uh, really nice, great captain's chairs, which is something we didn't have on the last boat, which I'm super excited about. Then we've got our X-band radar, our CCTV system, full touchscreen panel uh, over. Then we've got our conning station here, which allows me to check out what the engines are doing, our heading, gives me all the relevant in information in one quick glance on the touchscreen panel so I can see how the vessel's going and behaving. I can also switch over and check out, you know, what the generators are doing or, you know, go down, check out, you know, fuel tanks, uh, see how much fuel we have on board. Uh, currently, we've got a little over 80,000 liters and then, you know, check out water levels, what the fire system's doing, basically just check out everything that's happening on the vessel. Come on over, we've got the second chair, the lookouts chair over here on the port side. They've got the, the Transas and the Ectus station, so when we're underway, keeping an eye that making sure that our cross-track error, we're not diverting too far off of the course and making sure that we're, we're not gonna hit anything. Uh, and then also the S-band radar. So that's pretty much all the uh, information coming in here. Then if we come around, we also come over, we've got the uh, second officer's desk. This is where our second officer, Bjorn, you know, does most of his work. Bjorn's in charge of navigation and safety. So he's got a very important job on board, a lot of paperwork, a lot of ticking boxes, going through his monthly checks. So this is where we'll normally find him living. And then uh, lastly, but not least, just the uh, fire control panel and our lighting panel, how we turn our nav lights on, how we control the fire system. Uh, how we turn on, dress the ship up at night for uh, all its lights to make her look all pretty. So I think that's really about it. Uh, we've missed anything there, Blair? I don't think so. I think that's everything. Cool. Well, it was fantastic giving you guys a tour, a little bit of a look inside what it's like being a crew member on board. And uh, yeah, don't forget to like and follow. And uh, come back next week for our next full charter video that we're super excited to show you guys. So thank you guys. I would say this is where the magic happens. Yeah, this is where all the magic happens. And then through here where the magic happens, got the nice big bed. So, uh... Testing, testing. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here, mister? Okay, if you put this on YouTube, I'll actually be single for the rest of my life. No, you won't. <laughs> MTV, welcome to my office. Yeah, I even have my little bag. <laughs> oh, 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 easy, easy game. But people want to know what this is because I actually didn't know what this was until yesterday. So. It's a melee roller and you can roll sheets. <laughs> sheets off. Yeah. But this part of your crew is you. Well, the other day I was trying to pack up the dishes. Out of the and he got up and walked away. <laughs> it's your job. So he should get a bit on that. No, mate, it's not your job. <laughs> you tell him, mister. <laughs>